In this video, we're going to show you how to install peak wind braces on your greenhouse, high tunnel, or hoop house. Now, these braces come standard on most of our DIY high tunnel kits at Tunnel Vision Hoops, but they can be added to most structures pretty easily if you've already built something that needs some additional wind protection. Peak braces look very similar to corner braces, except they're located higher up. They start near the peak and come down at an angle, usually located between the purlins. These are specifically important for taller and wider structures, as those structures have more surface area on their end walls that have the potential to take a beating from wind. If you don't brace your structure correctly, or you buy a cheap DIY kit that lacks adequate wind protections, it could cost you your structure in a windstorm and all of the crops inside. Our structure here is 30 foot wide, so we're going to install four peak braces on each end, and we're going to get to it right now. There aren't many pieces and parts required to install peak wind braces. You're going to need the peak wind braces themselves made out of 1 and 3 8 inch or 1 and 5 8 inch outer diameter steel tubing. Ours have pressed and punched ends, but if you try to make your own, you could cap the ends with what are called end cups. So I'll add end cups as an optional item here in this list of materials. I'll link to where you can find all this in the description below. You'll also need brace bands for the diameter of your bows. Our bows are 1.9 inch outer diameter steel tubing, so our brace bands will be made to fit on 1.9 inch outer diameter steel tubing. And we'll need carriage bolts and nuts to work with the brace bands. Again, all the materials used in the making of this video will be linked in the description and if you want to help support this channel checking out the greenhouse supplies we sell really helps us out now for the tools needed you'll need a ladder an impact driver or a socket wrench a one half inch deep well socket channel locks a tape measure and a permanent marker I like starting at the end peak of the structure so that's where we're gonna place our ladder next I'm going to measure three inches off the center purlin to the left and the right and I'm going to make a mark with my permanent marker this is where the first brace bands will be on our peak wind braces Real easy if you just kind of separate them first. Then you can easily just push the brace band onto the bow. And then with a trusty pair of channel locks, you can bring the ends of the brace band back together so that they're close enough for a bolt to thread through. Here's a close up of what that looks like. We have our brace band three inches to the left and three inches to the right of the center purlin. Our peak braces have pressed ends with punched holes and the punched hole is offset. So we're going to position that punched hole so it is closest to the bow we're attaching it to. And we're gonna slide this pressed end so that hole lines up with the holes on our brace band. Once we do that, we're gonna drop a bolt from the top down, pushing it through the brace band, through the punched hole that's in our pressed end on this peak brace, and through the underside of the brace band. If I had another person here, they could work on the other end of this peak brace, but since I'm working solo, I like to put that unattached end of the peak brace on top of the next bow in. That bow acts as another pair of hands until I'm ready to attach that end permanently. Once our nut has been thumb tightened onto the carriage bolt, we can tighten it down permanently with a one half inch deep well socket. We're gonna repeat this process on the other side before we move on, lining the punched hole in the pressed end up with the brace band hole, dropping a bolt in, tightening the bolt with an impact driver so it's ready for me to attach at the next step. Here's a close up of what the peak braces look like at this point. As you can see, the brace bands are holding the end of the peak braces closest to the end bow, three inches to the left and the right of the center purlin. And if we look down to the other end of the peak brace, we can see that it is unattached. So we're going to repeat the process we just went through by pushing on a brace band, closing the brace band up a bit with channel locks, putting the open unattached end of the peak brace into the middle of that brace band, and and tightening the nut on the underside with a one half inch deep well socket. I'm going to repeat that on the other unattached end of the first pair of peak braces we have. And then I'm going to move on to the next set of peak braces. So we'll start those peak braces on the bow we just ended the first pair of peak braces on. And we're going to start this pair of peak braces just below the side purl in here that's closest to the last termination point. I made a mark three inches below the side purl I'm starting on here, so I know where I want to attach the brace band. So I'm going to follow the same attachment process we already went through for this one. And here's a close up of what the brace band looks Looks like when you're putting the peak brace through it and then dropping a bolt from the top down. As you can see, I'm putting the nut on the underside of the peak brace. This is what the peak wind brace looks like from the top, so you can see that once this has been completely installed, it should not obstruct with the greenhouse plastic that you'll be installing on top. As you can see, it's nice and smooth from the peak brace to the bow. The unit we just completed is the third of four that this end will have, so I'm going to quickly complete this fourth one here so that this end is completely done. Not all of these structures will need or have four per end but as I said at the beginning of this video this is a 30 foot wide structure so we're gonna do four on this end once I finish the fourth and final peak wind brace that is going on this end I'm gonna make my way down to the other end of the structure to repeat the entire process 
I won't make you watch those steps because they're identical to what I just showed you, but hopefully this video shed some light on how you can additionally brace your season extension structures or gave you an idea of a component you need to make sure you have when looking to purchase a DIY kit. If you found this video helpful or like watching videos on season extension and season extension structures, consider subscribing to our channel. And thanks for watching.